Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today's guest is off the chain. We are so excited to be talking to Mina and talking about Amazon PPC strategies. You guys know we need all the help that we can get. And he has said that his goal is to empower us to take back control and dominate our ads. So I am all in on this. Mina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very, very excited. Yeah. And no, and, and, uh, we were talking about your, um, you know, what you're doing and your plan and it's super, like, I think it's genius. I think it's amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing PPC strategies that can help, you know, you guys and anyone who's launching, uh, products on Amazon, whether it's private label or a uh, wholesale bundling. And, and, um, you know, I, I take a very data driven approach. And so it, you know, it's, it's just very logical and it's fundamental concepts you can follow no matter what you're doing. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your background Inter introduce us. Cause I know you've had quite an interesting career experience. So take us from yes. the beginning all the way to like, how did you get to be such an expert at Amazon PPC? Got it. So I, uh, very normal beginning, uh, you know, came to America in 2011. Uh, I grew up in uh, Dubai. I was born in Egypt and um, I, you know, I, I was a chemical engineer. I, I studied engineering, uh, graduated top of my class, uh, you know, got my bachelor's and my master's, got a corporate job, nine to five, a new product development for a medical devices company, just kind of the, the regular thing. And, you know, I kept working and I think five years into corporate nine to five, after changing jobs a few times, I realized that this wasn't it for me. And so I decided to start a supplement brand. I'm an MMA fighter. I still train. Uh, I fought and competed many times. And then, um, you know, I was, I was interested in creating a supplement brand that helps me as an MMA fighter, uh, helps boost my endurance. So I created MMA nutrition, which is an electrolyte uh, powder. It's still on Amazon. You guys can go check it out. Uh, and then I created a, a, you know, a few other brands after that, but anyways, I started with this one brand, but I had no idea how to do anything. Uh, and uh, as a business person, I just was an amazing engineer, horrible business person, huge passion for supplements. I was mixing supplements at home. So when I created wait the brand, minute, wait a minute. You were mixing supplements at home. Yeah, Tell us yeah. about this. Like, I see this chemistry lab like coming to life. <laughs> were you actually like mixing them? <laughs> no, it, yeah. I literally had, I would have this table. Uh, it, it's like, uh, so we had the living room and then we had like an in between room that had like a fish tank and, and uh, like, an, um, a, like a high top table. And so there I would have a, a food scale. I would have my little like aluminum bowl. I would have like my, my things like where I would mix everything. And then I would have all of these raw powders that I would bring from Amazon and I would study and I would have like this formula sheet, which is like, okay, I know I need, you know, 3.2 grams of betaine and three grams of beta alanine and two grams of L-arginine and, and one gram of creatine HCL. And then I would have them all and then I would mix them. And then I would also like add things to give it flavor. And I would have this like super combo pre-workout and, and things like that. So that's literally how I did things, um, you know, all throughout like college and, and um, you know, when I graduated, because I, fe I felt like I knew way more about supplements than the people making these supplements because I would see these ingredients and it would be like, oh, there's only like 31 milligrams of potassium. I'm like, what does 31 milligrams of potassium do? And on average, you're losing 1,500 a day on average as the normal person, not as a MMA fighter who's sweating like three pounds of, of uh, water every night. And so I just never understood why they would do that. And I would always cross-reference clinical studies and I would see like, okay, you know, in a study, they supplemented with X amount of this ingredient. And, you know, that's how they got the benefits. So why are, you know, why, why is it that people aren't doing that later on? I realized is all marketing, right? You're just putting a bunch of words and you make it sound cool to people. And then you market it through influencers, whatever, Amazon, and then you sell the product. So they didn't really have the people's best interest at heart. So for me, I said, I'm going to create something that's better than everyone else uh, as, a, as a supplement, an electrolyte powder. And, and, um, you know, I, I just didn't know how to sell it. I went gyms, gym to gym, door to door, uh, supplement stores. No one, like people would be like, I'll take one or like, we'll test one out, but no one really wanted to take it. And then I said, like, I, I don't like this. I don't like going this door to door salesman type thing and getting so much rejection and something is off. And I still had a full-time job. And so I decided to, to figure out how to sell it on Amazon. And, and I went super obsessive, deep dive, read every single 
article, video, YouTube video, podcast, everything. I consumed every single possible piece of content out there in 2018. And um, I'm at the end of the day, I just called Amazon. I'm like, I want to sell my product on Amazon. Like, how do I do it? And they're like, oh, we'll send you a, a, a starter package, whatever. They sent me an email and I filled out all of these things. And then next thing you know, I had a seller central account and uh, they're like, okay, cool. For you to sell supplements, you need a certificate of analysis and an invoice. And so like, I kind of like made those things up and, and sent it to them. And after four times of being rejected on the fifth time, they, they approved it. And that's where like the story started. So I started with the supplement brand on Amazon and I'm like, okay, I'm now on Amazon. How do I make this work? And two things uh, help my sales reviews and PPC. And so I knew that like, there was something with those two, like the other things I would change the SEO, I would change the images, whatever. I never really felt like a, a that strong of an impact. Of course, now we track everything, click through it, conversion rate. It definitely makes an impact. But the thing that makes like the, the, the biggest needle mover is uh, reviews and PPC. And so PPC was in charge of bringing people into the listing. And then reviews was in charge of getting those people who are at the listing to convert. And so it makes sense now that I know how things work. But back then I'm like, okay, it, you know, just when I change, when I turn these knobs, I see a result. So I started... Um, you know, burning, pretty much burning my own money uh, and tens of thousands of dollars on, on PPC advertising and then consuming content, talking to people, whatever, learning PPC, uh, you know, tips and strategies, whatever, implementing it myself. And because I had that engineering background where I understand like pattern recognition and I'm very systematic and controlled experiments and all these kinds of things, I was able to test one thing at a time and document like the result of these tests. And then finally, I was like, okay, I know like I've tested having five keywords in a campaign and 50 keywords in a campaign. And I know that when you have more than five, like this happens. So I did all of these tests and had like these logs of like all of the tests that I did and the outcome. And that's kind of like how I started learning. It was all on my own brand. And by 2020, we were doing $94,000 a month in revenue with MM, with with that just that one supplement. And so it was going well and uh, COVID hit and I decided to come on podcasts like these and share what has been working for me. I, I, I shared a little bit in the Facebook groups. It, 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 people loved it. They were like, oh my God, like tell us more, tell us more of like these things that you've been trying. So when I did the podcast, I did like 50, 60 podcasts in 2020. And then, you know, I pretty much uh, blew up in the industry as like Mina, the, the expert, but I, was, I wasn't like an expert or anything. I was just a practitioner who's practiced many, many, many times. And then uh, this aggregator hits me up and they said, hey, like we heard that you're really good at advertising. We want you to train our team. And I said, cool, like I'm, I'm happy to train your team. And then they said, but we want to test you on one of our brands first. And so they tested me on a brand. And four months later, they said they were testing six other much larger agencies. They all failed. I performed the best. And, uh, and then I look back, I'm like, man, I might be good at supplements, but like, I am really good at this PPC stuff. And so that's when I decided to start an agency because I figured like people are, are going to need that PPC help and they're going to pay me or if they don't pay me, if I don't exist, they're going to pay someone else. And uh, it would be, I would be doing a disservice, uh, you know, to people if I wasn't offering something that I was not just passionate about, but really, really good at. So that's where I am today. We manage 72 brands um, on Amazon. Four of them are mine or no, then there's also four that are mine. We also have three of, of the people on our team uh, or four people on our team have their own brands and we manage their brands as well. So, you know, I see a lot of things and I'm constantly like innovating and stuff like that in, in the PPC side. And, you know, I just want to share everything and give people all of my knowledge. And if they want to do it themselves, they can. Um, and if they don't have the time and they need the execution, then that's where I come in. Awesome. Well, I cannot wait to dive into some of these um, specific uh, strategies that you have. And one of them is like, okay, let's just start with some quick wins. Can you give us three PPC tips that we can all do right now, whether it's agency Amazing. or not do it yourself stuff? Okay, easy. So I'll, I'll walk you through uh, like a, how I would audit an account. And this I think would be add the most value because as I walk through every single piece, I'll tell you what I would do to, to fix things. So first things first, I look at your portfolios. If you have a parent ASIN, uh, I would uh, separate each parent ASIN into one portfolio. This way, everything is kind of um, like clean and easy and simple to, to separate. And you can see the performance 
per product. Then I would move into, uh, and so yeah, like if you have a bunch of portfolios, I think this is time to, to clean it up. Then I would go into campaign nomenclature. Campaign names are very, very important. This is how I would name my campaigns. It's your product code. So for example, my Hydrolyte Unflavored was HU. And then uh, space dash space, which is like my spacing, it will be SP or SB or SD based on sponsor product, brand or display. And then the type of ad, is it uh, close match, loose match, compliments or substitutes, broad phrase or exact, um, product targeting, category targeting, whatever it is. And then uh, the if there's like a purpose to that campaign, is it a ranking campaign? Is it, you know, whatever, a general campaign or uh, where and, and where that uh, keyword came from. So they come from the search term report or Helium 10. This all helps you in terms of like pattern recognition. Are all of your, so, so you can go and say, okay, let me type in SP and look at all of your sponsor products and then type in SB and look at all of your sponsor brand. And then you can notice that did your performance overall improve or worsen as you launch sponsor brands? Because what I've seen is sometimes you launch sponsor brands, they show up in the same place as your sponsor products. They end up eating budget, but not actually, I mean, they look good on the in the campaign manager, but like then when we look at it realistically, you're spending $100 a day, now you're spending $150, you're making $500 a day in sales, now you're making $550. Was that good? No, that's not good. But in campaign manager, it looks like one of your sponsored brand campaigns has a six X ROAS, the other one has a two X ROAS. And so you get thrown off because you're not really tracking. And so that, that separation helps. Then I jump into, well, then I look at the ROAS of the campaigns. Any campaign with a really good ROAS, I would scale the budget. So some people tell me, Mina, I have a $50 budget and you, we only spend $35 a day on that campaign. Why should I increase it? What I've seen is that if I have like a campaign with a 4X ROAS, $35 budget or $50 budget and spending 35, if I take that 50 to 500, that campaign starts spending $150. Why does that happen? I'm not entirely sure, but that's what I've seen. And I think it's because when you give it more breathing room, Amazon says, okay, we can afford more clicks. Let's spend more money there. So now th that's the next thing I would look at is, is the you know campaign uh, budgets. Then I would go into the campaign. The structure that I follow is one campaign should have one ad group and then a maximum of five keywords. It, you, you can audit this how. If you go and you look at the multiple ad groups, in, if you have multiple ad groups, you look that you have multiple ad groups, you'll notice that the budget is not splitting evenly. What I would do in that case is go into the ad group with the least amount of sales, pause anything that is not working. So it's spending money, not making any sales, not spending money, whatever, just to get rid of it. So you don't think that you're actually advertising for that keyword when you're not. Sorry. And then for the other ad group that there is, go look at the keywords. You, if you have more than five keywords, sort by sales. And if you notice that, you know, five or six of those keywords are generating sales and the rest aren't, oh, and then some of them aren't even getting any spend or whatever. So some people have a hundred keywords. Some people have 25, 30, pause everything that is not generating any sales in the last 30 days. And you can take those and relaunch them in their own campaigns. And when you do that, you'll notice that Maybe in this campaign, it wasn't generating sales because there's a big keyword there that is you know, sucking up all the budget. But when you launch it in its own campaign, it might generate two or three profitable sales. And that adds up because over 100 keywords, that's 300 profitable sales. Um, so that's the next I thing that would look question. at. Do you yeah. run you buy multiple campaigns on the same product? Can you go into that yes. a little bit about why that's important and why you would do that? Okay, so the goal of my PPC is to drive as many sessions as possible into my listing at the lowest cost possible. So I'm not looking, don't look at ROAS, don't look at ACOS. All of these things are, are one indicator, right? And, and that indicator is like, did you convert? Did, did you spend money and convert? But, but conversion rate is a huge portion of that equation. So when I'm looking at how effective is my PPC, I'm looking at how much money I'm spending on PPC and how many sessions I'm getting. And if I'm able to bring more and more and more sessions into the listing at the same like cost per session or at a lower cost per session, then I know I'm winning on the ad side. And if that doesn't convert into profitable sales, that's not on the PPC, that's on the conversion, that's on the listing, main image, price, reviews, title, bullet points, enhanced brand content, questions, videos, all of that stuff that's on the listing. So in terms of PPC, my goal we've established is to bring as many people into the listing. I'm tracking sessions. If I do one campaign and I'm going to do whatever I can, I'll put the keywords in, whatever, big budget, big bids, I'm going to get a certain number of sessions. At some point, it's going to get capped. So how do I get more sessions? And a session, by the way, is a unique Amazon account, a visitor, right? So we're not tracking clicks because 
Mina can, can go in there, type in electrolyte powder, click on my ad, electrolyte supplement, click on my ad, unflavored electrolyte powder, click on my ad. Now that's three clicks and it's the same person. So I'm not interested in the same person. I'm interested in more unique people. And so I'll launch a new campaign. And when I launch that new campaign, again, with five different keywords, I'll notice that um, you know I'm getting more sessions. So as I'm tracking the sessions, the more campaigns that I'm launching with you know, unique um, keywords, not the same keywords, obviously, uh, then I notice that I'm getting more sessions. And then it's all going to come down to how much am I spending to get those sessions. If the spending is proportionally going up, then maybe I'm overspending and I need to stop and, and uh, you know, optimize. And if it's going down, then that's amazing. It could also be that because I'm spending more on ads, my organic rank goes up, my organic rank goes up, you get that free sessions into the listing. And so, then, then the strategy becomes, okay, what keywords am I going to target, right? So we talked about launching campaigns, targeting keywords. What keywords am I going to target? Let's say you don't know. I would start off by having your four auto campaigns broken up. So a close match campaign, loose match, compliments, and substitutes. Close match and substitutes usually perform better. Loose match and compliments, not as much. Have the auto campaign. Go and do keyword research uh, to find your main keyword. So the way that I do that, I'm sure you've explained how to do keyword research. The way that I do it is very simple. I go into Helium, I go into Amazon, type in the main keyword that I think, uh, find the top 10 competitors using X-Ray, launch them into Cerebro, and then I use a few uh, filters. Like I need like at least eight out of the 10 minimum ranking competitors, which means show me the intersection of, uh, you know, of keywords between all of those competitors, at least 300 searches a month or more, and no more than position 60, because maybe if someone's ranked at position 120 for a keyword, it's not that relevant. And so that will give me a refined list of keywords. And I'll start with the most relevant high search volume ones. Uh, let's say I'll take five or 10 of those, and I'll launch them in their own campaigns. I'll do broad and phrase and exact. Exact and broad and phrase behave completely differently. So even if it's a, it's the same keyword electrolyte powder as exact or broad, my broad could perform 10 times better than exact. Why? Because broad is just, it's cycling through different keywords at different times of the day. So it just ha might have different performance than exact that's targeting one keyword at you know a certain time of the day. And from those auto and broad and phrase campaigns, I'm going to go into the search term report and I'm going to find which ones converted profitably, take those out, make sure that I'm not already targeting them, right? Not, not some of the main keywords and then launch them in their own campaigns. And so that is the cycle of launching, discovering keywords, finding which ones worked, launching them in their own campaigns. Uh, and then the ones that worked, you know, spend more money on them, uh, you know, find new search terms, launch them. The ones that didn't work, lower the bids. And if it's an auto broader phrase, so, you know, in the auto campaign, you can have a few keywords that just, you know, spent a lot of money, didn't make sales. I would go into the search term report, identify those, extract them and add them as negative. So we stop spending money um, on keywords that didn't work and note and beware, do not pause any keyword or add as a negative. If, if it's like a keyword that worked and you want to, you're like, oh, this generated me good sales. I'm going to put it in its own campaign and I'm going to pause it here or, or turn it off or add it as a negative because you are not guaranteed to be able to replicate performance. So if it works in the broad campaign, it does not mean that it's going to work in an exact. And the last thing you want to do is have something that works, pause it, and then launch it in the exact, and then it doesn't make money. And then you just lost money. Okay, I got some, some, some clarifying questions here. So in your opinion, in your experience, when you say things like when you know a campaign is working, what are your what are your, some of your guidelines or indicators? You're saying this is a good campaign. What is what are those ratios or percentages we're looking to target? Yeah. So relatively. OK, uh, it, first of all, understand what your your um, profit margin is. So if I have a twenty dollar product, 50 percent profit margin, uh, you know, so my, my sale price is twenty dollars. My cost of goods is five dollars. My Amazon fees is five dollars. I'm left with ten dollars. Mm -hmm. So I know that. Out of those ten dollars, I I have like five dollars to to you know work with in terms of marketing, and then five dollars in profit. So that's a twenty five percent total ACOS that I can afford. So if I have a twenty five percent total ACOS, I'm generally going to be okay with up to a fifty percent on the ads because there you're also missing the organic attribution. So that's kind of how I would gauge, gauge it. So anything that has a fifty percent ACOS or less as a campaign or or a keyword, to me that's good. Let's keep it running. If it's above 50% ACOS, the, the higher it is, the more significant I'm going to lower the bid. So if it's 60% ACOS, I might lower by 5 cents. If it's 75, I might lower by 7 cents. If it's 100, I'm sorry, I might lower by 15 cents. That's the way that I would look at it. 
Awesome. That's a good, good indicator there. I know some of us are like, oh, well, is this good or bad? And we don't really know. And there's not really a guideline. You know, you're thinking you're spending so much money, but honestly, it's that cost to acquire those new customers yeah. that eventually ge generate um, that that organic traffic. Okay. You have some, uh, you want to talk to us too about uh, DSP. What is Amazon DSP and inform us on this? Yes. So this is something that I want to talk about because I don't think there's enough education about it. And, and uh, there's a lot of misinformation. So People say like DSP, you need $30,000 in ad spend and all of this crazy stuff. I don't know what you've heard about DSP. I'd love to hear from you after I, I uh, explain it. But um, basically, Amazon DSP is Amazon's demand side platform. So you have regular Amazon PPC. And Amazon PPC is where you are targeting keywords in the search. So people are coming to Amazon. They're searching. They, you know, and then they see ads. This It says sponsored. Um, and then, you know, if they click on a listing, they scroll down. It says sponsored products related to this item. There's that. And then there's obviously the other placements like a sponsored video and headline search ad. Now, Amazon DSP is different. It allows you to target Amazon's audiences based on uh, like the shopping behavior. So you can target people who visited your listing, people who purchased your listing, people who purchased your competitors products, people who visited your competitors products, but haven't purchased from them or people that have shown that they're in the market for your product based on Amazon's data. And so it allows us to leverage Amazon's first party data. And at the same time, uh, target on and off of Amazon. So you can target on amazon.com, uh, the, the mobile uh, app, uh, you know, the, the mobile web, like regular, if you just type in amazon.com on your Safari uh, or Chrome on your phone. Or you can target uh, publisher sites and third-party sites. So Amazon has access to a lot of third-party sites. We can leave the third-party and publisher sites on the side. Their conversions are usually not that great. But what you can do is you can literally start targeting people who visited your, your uh, listing in the last 30 days but haven't purchased from you or your competitor. People who've purchased from you in the last year but haven't purchased from you in the last 90 days. People who have uh, visited your competitors' listings but haven't uh, purchased from you or your competitors in the last 30 days, meaning that they're interested in the product, they just haven't purchased one. And that you know, it can, is, is very powerful because you can start building this funnel where the bottom is loyalty, bringing back people who've purchased from you uh, in the past, bringing them back, uh, cross-selling your products to each other, uh, you know, uh, then you can move up uh, and start retargeting. So people who have shown interest in your product haven't purchased to competitor targeting, taking stuff from your competitor audience, from your competitors, complementary uh, product targeting and so, and, and, you know, and so on. And that will bring new to brand uh, uh, shoppers to, you know, to your, to your audience. So it's people that might've never purchased from you. You're now expanding. So instead of just trying to capture demand, you're now getting new demand from other people. And that's the power of DSP. Uh, you don't need uh, any minimum to start. So it's it's uh, you can start with a thousand dollars. That's what I did. You know, when I when my agency got access to our own DSP seat, I started testing on MMA nutrition like I always do with a thousand dollars, and then two thousand and five thousand, and you know started learning some of the best practices, same way I did with PPC. And um, the only thing is, you have to run this through an agency. You can't do it yourself, which means. Some age, you know, some agents are going to be like, okay, you need a thirty thousand dollar minimum. We'll charge you ten percent, whatever. Um, you know, so it's worth their while. So that's that's DSP, what it is. Uh, hopefully, it's demystified. When should you use DSP? Um, I think if your PPC is working and you're converting profitably, then you can move on to DSP and start building that funnel. Start with loyalty you know, bring up retargeting uh, and then you can start doing like competitor and complementary to actually bring new people. But this is what's going to happen. Your ROAS will drop. Your your return on your ad spend is going to be worse, but you are going to bring new people into your audience. So that's usually, I think, how it works in terms of marketing. When you're, when you're marketing anything and you're kind of like in your little lane, mm -hmm. it's very, very cheap for you because you're acquiring customers, you know, you, you know you can acquire. Then as you get broader and broader and broader, it costs you more money, but you're bringing, you know, it's, it's broader. So you're, you're, you're growing and growing and growing. So your return on ad spend is less, but your total revenue will be more. 
Yeah, and that's so important too because as our brand grows and changes and maybe the people on Amazon are already used to seeing it, uh, the DSP can really bring in that outside traffic that Amazon is used, harnessing their power and their database to be able to redirect customers in ways that like, for example, if you've ever done a Facebook ad or if you've ever done an ad, I mean, I've done that at Mommy Income. Most of our listeners here are just on Amazon. They're e-commerce sellers. They're not really messing with a whole lot of ads out there aside from Amazon. But basically what this helps you guys dig into eventually is um, reaching the market outside of Amazon with the power of Amazon. So think of uh, ads on, on Google, ads on other pages that you visit. You know, you see the side ads, you see all kinds of different yep. banner ads. That's basically Amazon helping you target your market. Someone who has been to your listing and then has not bought for whatever reason, you can now retarget them with your Amazon ads with a DPS. So I think it's, it's ground floor. I think it's going to be amazing once they figure it all out. I'm sure that it's got a lot of bugs and things like that. But when you're ready to do that, I will say though that um, because it's robust and because it works really well and has a, a more, uh, it has a bigger cost in the beginning, you've got to be ready with the inventory. You have to have stuff in yeah. stock. If you're going to be advertising like this, you better have the stock to back it up because it will generate sales for you. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Someone uh, recently had ran a, a campaign and then they're like, I ran out of stock. I sold everything out. And I'm like, dial down your campaign a little bit until you have the stock ready. So that's always yeah. an important thing with PPC is that once you launch something, be ready to sell your stuff because it's supposed to work, right? <laughs> so um, now I know this seems a little bit controversial with the technology we have these days and apps and softwares and all this stuff. Why do you still use spreadsheets? That's always something that, that people ask sometimes. Now, I, I personally love spreadsheets. They're comfortable and easy for me to kind of understand. Um, but there's definitely that question out there of like, why do you still use spreadsheets? Yeah, so I am. I'm not against uh, software. I am ag against automation, and and the reason is so. There's a few reasons why I use uh, uh, sheets and and not software. The first thing is because I don't want anyone to to get uh, too comfortable with the, with the software. Set a rule, um, and then next thing you know, that rule is running. Anything with a fifty percent, fifty five percent echo, so it's going to add it as a negative. And guess what? You find this one keyword that's generating. 30% of your sales, but has a 57% echo. So what are you going to do? Are you going to keep it or kill it? You're obviously going to keep it because it's generating 30% of your sales, but a, but a machine can't think about that. So it's just going to automatically kill it. So that's what I'm against. I'm against the software making so many changes, um, you know, that, that are really unwarranted. I'm against automation where things are just running because if, if you guys didn't know, we just passed prime day it was October 11th and 12th. And up until seven days before Prime Day, everything is fine. Seven days leading up to Prime Day, your ads will suck. Like what something that could be doing a 30% ACOS will do a 70% ACOS. Why? Because people are holding off until Prime Day. And then post Prime Day, you have and then on Prime Day, things are, are amazing, but you have so many window shoppers coming in. And you you're again, all of your ads could basically blow up if you if you aren't planning effectively. All very, very high ACOS is. Again, a machine would just cut all of that out. Post Prime Day, there's a lull. And then about five to seven days after Prime Day, we normalize again and we're back to normal. And so how can a, an, an, how can a computer work around that? But a human can. And so the system that we follow, and honestly, you know, we manage a lot, uh, you know, a lot of uh, products. It does not require, you know, a, whole, a machine and all this stuff. We love a, a tool that can help us do things at scale. So for example... Uh, Atomic is one of those, uh, PPC Ninja is one of those, uh, you know, My Real Profit is a great analytics tool. It doesn't allow you to do things, but it allows you to interpret data very quickly. But what you can do is you can set some filters, show me everything that's X, Y, and Z, show you, and then you can, you know, choose to take actions based on that. And that is what I'm, I support. Uh, and so for me, you know, when I'm doing a bulk sheet optimization, literally all I'm doing is downloading the spreadsheet highlighting everything, sort and filter, looking at one product at a time, sorting through, you know, highest to lowest ACOS, uh, highest spend to lowest spend without any sales, and then highest to lowest impressions. Anything with a very high ACOS, I'm, I'm changing the bids. And it's not that hard. To, it takes me maybe 15 or 20 minutes to do a full, uh, you know, bulk sheet optimization. I can do it for five products in about 30 minutes. So it's nothing, you know, crazy. When I'm trying to launch, uh, you know, new key, you know, search terms, I'm going to the search term report, sort and filter, you know, show me everything with a zero to 25% ACOS, taking those keywords, 
extracting them, you know, deduplicating them, making sure that I'm not already targeting them, uh, you know, in my main campaigns. And then, you know, I have another sheet that has a simple macro where I put the keywords, put the conditions, and it creates the campaigns for me that I could just upload to Amazon. So it's not that hard. It, you know, people, a lot of software companies with PPC software like to make it sound like they have AI and they're going to do all this crazy stuff and, you know, that you're going to die without software. You're not because it's a very simple system. You, you should have really good analytics, look at the analytics, interpret it, understand what, what you need to do, go in, take the actions based on the bulk sheets and all this stuff. And the tool should help you take the actions quickly. But the tool should never think for you or take the actions for you because how can you trust the, the tool? You know, the people who are claiming that they program this, this uh, PPC tool to have AI and have this amazing algorithm, have you checked their logic? No, you haven't. Because if you ever ask them, show me your logic, number one, they're either going to say no, or it's proprietary or whatever. So you're never going to be able to check their logic. So how can you make sure that it's it's valid? Because there's no way to make sure. I mean, if I create a, a PPC software or anything, the number one thing is, here's what what the what it's going to do. If you don't like it, change it. Because I can't just be like, hey, I'm going to do some sort of secret thing that is secret AI. Woo, and then you're going to make uh, 10 times more money. I just, I don't think it's authentic. Yeah. I, I love how you're saying that. And that's why I brought that up because I too, like, I just actually had this question asked to me the other day and someone was asking, well, what system or software or tool or program do you use to do your bookkeeping or do your, well, it's actually bundle management inventory. Cause when you talked about bundles earlier, you know, that like uh, yeah. we have say one of my bundles has five products from five different vendors. I'm one of the private label owners of one of the things and the other four products come from different vendors. And he was asking, one of my clients was asking, well, how do you manage the inventory and this, all that? And I said, spreadsheets. He's like, really? That seems so antiquated. And I said, actually, it's the best form because like you said, we're keeping our finger on the pulse of our own business. I'm not automating something and then finding a boatload of problems later. We're in there in the system. We can see exactly how we're ordering, where we're ordering. And there isn't a software, like you said, that can actually think. You can't program it to think like we would think as buyers uh, and like making rules that are that are so black and white. Sometimes it's not black and white. Like you said, sometimes yeah. you have a 60% cost here, but it's the best performing keyword so how do you balance that out um so i love the fact that you still use that and you're you're understanding and, and most people are thinking that way tools are simply tools they are a hammer does not work without your cooperation it doesn't hammer yeah. nails for you on your behalf you actually have to pick it up and hammer nails in same thing with our software so that's why i love um what you guys do because i know that you have personally spent your time and energy and expertise figuring this stuff out for us and on our behalf and you're constantly testing these things to see what works and what doesn't work and being flexible with your ppc campaigns are really important what works today isn't necessarily going to work 30 days from now so we have to pay attention to our own ppc our campaigns because they will drain your account faster than anything else if you've got um the wrong filters the wrong rules the wrong things set up yeah and and i i can tell you this across all of the brands that we manage every single one of them has been different, like has had a different, so it, it, there hasn't been one rule that I could have. So if I can't even apply one rule to, to 70 something brands, how can a software apply the same rules to all the brands, right? Even if they have this machine learning thing, it's just every single, you know, product we've encountered behaves a little bit differently. And so I, I took the, a different route, which is empowering my team to be as smart as me to understand Amazon as a whole, to understand listings and 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 notice, oh, well, these keywords were doing well last week. And now you had a review that was a one-star review that moved up a position and things are like a little bit different. And so now, now they're detecting these things and they understand it like, okay, maybe we, we tone things back down until we get more five-star reviews and then we bring things back up. And that all of that is just that you can't have a, a, a machine do. If, if you could, then I would say, go put that machine to work in the stock market because you will make way more money than selling it to Amazon sellers, right? For sure. I mean, honestly, honest to goodness, uh, I know that this this seems so complicated and so robust, but we have to be able to do these things on our own. We cannot outsource and automate absolutely everything. Um, we have to be able to pay attention to our campaigns, to our own 
products, even if you're working with an agency, um, working with an agency, they need to understand you, your business, your business goals, your product goals, your bit, your customer avatar, who you're targeting, all of these things. It's not just an algorithm. It's not just an ad spend. It's not just a picking a campaign. It's an overall business strategy to increase your revenue, increase visibility for your brand. It's not just a pay per click ad campaign. It's so much more for your business. Now, could you give us a little insight of what it's like to work with an agency? What are some qualifications? What are some minimum requirements to work? Because um, I know a lot of our students are going to want to work with you and your team once they hear this podcast. So um, what's it like to work with a PPC agency? Yeah, so I think the qualifications, right? You have to understand that a PPC agency is not going to fix your problems. They are only going to enhance uh, what you have. So if you have a good product and and you know you're getting some traffic and it's converting, then when you put it in the right hands of someone who, who can run ads and bring traffic to it, then you're going to get a lot more traffic. And whatever is happening right now will be amplified. So if right now you're making you know five thousand dollars in profit uh, a month, then you can make ten and fifteen. But if you're losing money or if you're not even able to br- break even, don't think that a, a PPC agency is going to come in there and then start making you profitable. Um, because I know everyone has that silver bullet dream, right? Where they're going to hire a PPC agency who are experts. And next thing you know, their business is going to explode. It's not. This is one tiny piece of the puzzle where we are bringing more people to come and check out your product. So let's say there's a hundred people coming and looking at your product, you know, every day, we can make that 300, 400, 500, and spend the least amount of money doing that. That's all we can do. The rest is going to be on the, the listing to convert. You have to still manage your inventory. You have to manage your cash flow problems, um, which are going to happen as you scale. So it's just the first thing to keep in mind. I would say in terms of qualifications, on average, you know, you're know you going to pay us around 2400 2500 a month. You're going to pay some agency in the $2,000 range. So I would say at least have $5,000, $6,000 a month in profit uh, per month before investing that money into an agency, because yes, the agency can help you scale over time. You're going to make more money, but you don't want to be dipping in that much into your uh, profits because then you can't really afford the agency. You're losing, you know, you know, money there. You're, you need to uh, pay for more inventory because if I take you from selling a thousand units a month to 1500 a month, you're going to need to front that additional 500 units. So that could be whatever, two or 3000 more dollars that you're not going to get back until you sell everything. And then it you know comes back like two, three weeks later. So th- those are kind of the qualifications. I would work with someone that can answer all of your questions and then can teach you at the same time. So ask them, what are you doing? What's the strategy? Can you show me how you do this? Can you show me how to do that? Can you explain this? Can you explain that? Because you don't want to be you come into an agency, they do some crazy things in the back. And then next thing you know, you're like, okay, what are you guys doing? Well, this is, you know, we're just doing our, our like, you know, little proprietary thing. Um, so you, you, you want to stay away from that. You want to favor transparency and people that say, this is exactly what we're doing. This is how you can do it. And then the, the only thing that they're selling is the execution, not the actual know-how. Um, yeah, I think I think I mean that those are kind of the things that I would uh, look for before working for an agency. Um, a couple of things you can do very very quickly right now if you want to see like you know is your product uh, gonna work or not. Go look at how much you've spent on ads in the last thirty days. Let's say it's a thousand dollars. Go look at your sessions in the last thirty days. Let's say it's a thousand sessions. So that's one dollar per session. So your PPC spend divided by your sessions is your cost per session. So let's say that's one dollar per session. Go look at your unit session percentage in the last 30 days. Let's say that's 10%. That means you need 10 sessions uh, to make one sale. So that's a you know, 10% conversion rate is 10 sessions to make one sale. 10 sessions times $1 per session, that's $10 to make one sale. So if you're co- it's costing you right now $10 to make one sale and your profit per unit is $11, you're in a, in a bad situation. And I don't think that, you know, the the PPC agency is good. The PPC agency can drop that cost per session down by, let's say, 25, 30%. But it's not going to drop it down by 50 to 100%. Um, So you could be having a conversion problem. So make sure that you understand your numbers. You have enough profit margin. Your conversion rate is decent, which, again, you can test your price, your reviews, main image, the rest of the images, add videos to your listing, enhance brand content, all of that. And then if it's now all of, like, what's left is, Can we cut down our cost per session a little bit and bring more people to the listing? Sorry, that's where a PPC agency comes in. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. Now, what one last question for those that maybe aren't ready for an agency just yet. What is one thing that they can do right now to set up uh, a, a, a campaign that would really help boost their sales even just right now? Whether it's one campaign or multiple, what is your number one strategy for even setting up your first campaign? Okay, there is no one thing that's going to that's gonna help that much, right? The, the easiest thing is go to Helium 10, uh, sign up for whatever the cheapest program is. And I have a full course there. So it's 35 videos of exactly how to do PPC. So you can learn how to do it yourself. But if you want something simple, go into your search term report. So go to campaign manager, measurement and reporting, go into, you know, get a report, search terms, uh, 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 last 30 days, download it, and then sort by sales from highest to lowest and find a keyword that is gen or the five top five keywords they're generating the most amount of sales make sure that you're not already targeting them and then you can launch those uh in their own campaigns as broad phrase and exact that should hypothetically help enhance what's already working so you have a full training on helium 10 in in their portal you guys mommyincome.com forward slash helium 10 <laughs> Sign yes. up for Helium 10 and then go watch the training. You know why? Because we, people like Mina and I, spend lots and lots of time and energy creating a training for you guys because we want to be able to help you succeed on Amazon. The training is there. Make sure you go and look at that. And if you want more from the team, you want to talk with Mina and his team, please reach out. What is the best way people can reach out and speak to you directly about uh, the services you provide? Perfect. So if you go to triviumco.com, T-R-I-V-I-U-M-C-O.com, uh, you can get a free audit. So someone from the team can take a look at your all of your campaigns. And then instead of just like giving you some brief advice, we'll give you exactly what to do on how to fix everything in your campaigns all. And then you can do it yourself. Um, or you can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. My Instagram is at the Mina Elias. LinkedIn is Mina space Elias. Find me, ask me questions. Don't send me a wall of text, just one question at a time. And I promise I'll answer you. But when I get this like, you know, like questions, I'm like, damn, I, I can't even, this is too much for me. I'm too busy. I feel you. I know. I know the DM fill yeah. up really fast, right? With like paragraphs of stories. No, honestly, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Send, he said, send a question, but send a question. So if you have a bunch of questions and you're not sure, write it all down yourself and then be like, what's the one question I would love yeah, to have what, answered here? One at a time. Like, give me like little bits and pieces. Like, Hey, what about this? Okay. Answer. What about this answer? But if, cause like when you do that, it's easy. It just takes me like two seconds to answer a question. If it takes me like 15 minutes to answer a question, I'm just going to be like, all right, I have too many things on my plate. I love how transparent you are that you're my kind of people. I know it's like, we don't, we, we want to answer you. We want to help you. But if you send me two paragraphs, I'm not reading it. I'm just deleting no. it. I don't have time for that. But a one quick question. Those are my favorites is like, Hey, what are your thoughts on this? I'm like, Oh no, be asked directly. So I appreciate your time, your energy. This is so informative to help people understand what they need when it comes to PPC, why they need it, why they need to keep their finger on the pulse and not just let an agency take over and the best you can do. You guys, you are the CEO of your business. You are the driver of your business and what you want has to align with the people you work with. And if you want to have uh, better PPC campaigns, you need to be part of the process. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you need to be part of the process so you understand the who, what, when, where, why of PPC and why it can help you and what the purpose is. So thank you so much for your expertise and your time. You guys, all the links will be below this video, will be in the show notes. So if you wanna reach out, um, you are able to reach out all the links are there and don't forget your free analysis so get your free analysis uh reach out to the team there and they will help you because um these are the things that are most important if they're going to give you an analysis of what's going on and of course all the steps that they can do to help you uh with your ppc campaigns we appreciate your time and energy thank you so much for coming y'all i know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing listening to any other show i don't take that for granted thank you for your time thank you for your energy and uh, we'll see you same time same place next week on the Amazon files.